The Fantasy Six-Pack Hour with your hosts, Joe Bond. Ah, you're awful. <laughs> and A.J. Applegar. It's Sin Shoo Sin Shoo. It's a mouthful. All right, all right. Welcome to Fantasy Six Pack Hour. My name is Joe Bond, founder of FantasySixPack.net. With me as usual, co-host, AJ Abergarth. What's up, man? Uh, not too much, man. Just uh, hanging out, watching this debacle of a Thursday night game. Seems to be the, uh, the, the standard for Thursday night football. Yeah, we but get a few good ones. Now. And we get a few good ones, but this one's been pretty craptastic so far. Uh, yeah. A lot of turnovers. Chargers finally just scored a Hunter Henry touchdown, but it's not been. It just has not been pretty, man. Um, Ten to seven Raiders right now. Uh, we'll, we'll see what happens. All right, man. Um, so week ten coming up. You know we're getting near the end of the. The regular season for, for fantasy football is kind of crunch time for a lot of teams who are who are in desperate need for some wins. Uh, so you know a lot of a lot of interesting moves happen this time of year. You know you get those guys who who drop depth players who could be very useful, drop the handcuffs who could be useful, just for got, for anybody who could get more points right now. You know, and then the teams who are real good and you know have the top heavy teams. Um, they're going out and scooping up those handcuffs, and I mean that's just how it is. You know, you can't you you can't be able to do both. Um, go get all the best players and have all your handcuffs unless you've got a super deep bench. So, um, you know, I, you know, we talked about that kind of strategy a few weeks ago, and and now is really when you see it uh, really start happening. People just start panicking. You know, it, I wouldn't say panicking, but you know making the decisions they need to make to to make the run or set themselves up for a playoff run, you know? Um, yeah. So, so before we get into it, let's do our beer of the week. Beer. All right, man, what you got? Uh, well, we kind of touched on it last week, um, and I, I went with your recommendation here on the stone – Fear Movie Lions Double IPA. Um, it's it's kind of I guess it's interesting. I don't know. It's it wasn't what I was expecting. I guess, but it's it's a little malty maybe, but mm -hmm. it's very good. Like yeah. it's just very easy drinking, not overly hoppy, which is which is nice little change of pace. Um, but yeah, it's it's good, man. I like it. It's, yeah, it's hard I to go wrong with Stone. Yeah, they have so many good ones. Um, so mine is actually out of a, a growler. So a uh, friend of the show used to be a writer for us, but unfortunately had to drop out. Uh, Keenan Keeling, happy 40th, buddy. Um, went yeah, to your went to your little, yeah, went to your, uh, little get together on, on Saturday this past weekend down in Silver Spring, Maryland. Silver Branch Brewing, an nth degree double Imperial IPA. Um, this is like a ten and a half percent beer, so there's a twenty four ounce sitting next to me right now in a glass. I might be slurring my speech at the end of this, so it's all good. Um, <laughs> well, you already are, so you're on your way. Cool. All <laughs> right, I've so had good. like three sips. That's good. To, that's yeah. good to go. This will be an awesome show. Let's Sounds do it. Good. Um, so cheers. Um, all right, man. So, you know, honestly, there. Isn't a ton to talk about this week. Um, just, I mean, I guess the the big stories we'll get to, you know, the, the couple headlines, I guess we'll get to, but they're kind of meh. Um, I guess the the topics that the topic that we thought would be good to, good to touch on, and and I got this idea because I've been getting a bunch of Twitter questions about some of these guys, and that is the newly crowded backfields. And, you know, we'll start with Arizona here, Arizona Cardinals. And, of course, you know, we, we talked last week about Kenyon Drake getting traded to them and David Johnson being hurt and Chase Edmonds being hurt. And both of us, and I don't, I'm pretty sure not a single damn person in the industry thought Kenyon Drake was going to do anything. Um, 
But the dude busted off and had like one of the best games <laughs> that probably a career game for him. Uh, but yeah, yeah. Had a phenomenal game. And anybody who was forced to start him due to bye weeks or injuries uh, got lucky as hell, in my opinion. But now we've got David Johnson coming back. Edmonds is a week or two away, I'd say, still. Um, it, just what's your, you know, what's your take on this? I mean, after reading all the kind of beat writers and hearing from the coaches about how they're going to be splitting time, it's going to be a committee. I mean, is that just is that bullshit or are we you know this is going to be david johnson's backfield still and you know everybody else just going to get like a a few touches or are we really looking at a committee when david johnson comes back uh i mean johnson's expected to play this week we'll get into that a little bit later too but Edmonds, as you said will be out I, i think they're still worried about dj being fully healthy um so I would not be surprised to see Drake kind of be more of the, the rushing back and DJ, you know, being used a little more out in space, uh, more as a receiver and, and getting him some rushing touches. But, you know, they really need to, to play it smart with him. And now that they've seen that Drake can actually play football, um, I mean, he always could, but he was just on a, garbage team so it it was a lot harder to do um i don't know if i see the same repeat repeat performance of what he did last week but i I do like his upside and i I think it's going to be more of a committee especially once edmonds gets back healthy i mean he's kind of already like the the odd man out um because of the health issue but even once he's healthy, I, I think he'll get a, a few touches here and there just to spell these guys. Yeah, so on the, on the screen here, you know, the notes we've got here is, is the snap counts, the snap share for the, these Cardinals running backs. Now, of course, the first eight weeks, Kenny Drake was not there, but this was a predominant David Johnson backfield, uh, anywhere between... I mean, the lowest was 60% in week two up until he got hurt in week seven. Um, but other than that, it was like a 70, 75%. But, I mean, you did sort of start seeing it because in the beginning of the season, it was like 87, 86%. And then it just dropped 70 to 75%. I don't know what changed. Um, maybe they just thought they had to just start getting Edmonds more involved, give David Johnson more breathers. So it is a little telling that they're already starting to do it. Um, week seven doesn't count because that's obviously the week David Johnson got hurt. Um, well, I, oh, he was healthy. He was healthy, but decided, played no, a never snap. Mind, I'm not healthy. <laughs> yeah, played a snap or two or whatever, and then like came out of the game. So that week doesn't really count. That's week right. eight doesn't count clearly because that was the week David Johnson didn't play at all. Um, yeah, but I don't know. It, I don't really know what to say. I mean, I would say just. Total random guess. I mean, look, I, I think really nobody knows, right? Um, just kind of spitballing here. I'm thinking like a 60% snap share for David Johnson and this week. and So maybe like 60-40 between him and Drake. And then when Edmonds comes in, maybe like a 55 and then split the rest between Edmonds and Drake. Like, I just I can't see them taking Johnson off the field the majority of the time for either one of these guys. Um, unless one of the other guys just gets, you know, you know, hot, you know, hot in the game, kind of like Drake did. Right. And then you just ride. Yeah. But I just don't see it happening. So, yeah, I mean, again, I I think it's going to come down to health and uh, I can see Johnson getting a 60% share, but I don't, I don't think he's going to be that high this week. I think it's going to be, maybe 55 45 drake over mm. johnson um for for the rushing share obviously dj like i said i feel like he's well that was get, so i was this is just total snap share total snap share yeah i mean it might it might be pretty close to 50 50 in my mind then hmm. but i i feel like i feel like dj's value this week from a fantasy standpoint is going to be more as a receiver and, and the nice thing with that is he's not going to be, you know, plowing through the line and hurting himself more. 
So I, I think if he's freed up in space there, that'll help, you know, get him moving again and, and hopefully get his, his injuries, you know, off of his mind. Yeah, getting David Johnson right is always more important, I think. But um, a little update in the game. Melvin Gordon, touchdown, Chargers. So, now, that's after Harris looked like he had his Another turnover, yep. It almost did, yep. Absolutely. They <laughs> called it back. Offside. Yep, they I'm, called it I'm back. I'm like so. two, two plays behind you. So oh, that's right. I always forget that. that, man. You got to get a real TV downstairs in your basement. Anyway. Um, yeah, I have a real TV. It's just a streaming version. You know what I mean. <laughs> All right. Next team here. So this one's interesting. You know, one we talked about in the preseason because we knew what was coming. Cleveland Browns. So obviously Chubb, Nick Chubb has been a stud all year. Um, and But Kareem Hunt was always looming. And we don't really know what's going to happen here. Um, again, it's, it's another one of those, you know, Freddie Kitchens is uh, is talking. He's going to be mixing him in plenty. But what the hell does that mean, right? And I'd say two weeks ago, you would have been like, all right, plenty, right? I mean, you're giving Chubb like 80 to 97% in some games snap share, right? I mean, it's just there's no way you were taking Chubb off the field because he was so good. The last two games, Chubb has been in the 60% snap share. With Dontrell Hilliard. That's right. Dontrell Hilliard. <laughs> 38 and 40%. So if they're doing that with Hilliard, what the hell are they going to do when Hunt is in the game? I mean, it's his first game back after eight, nine weeks of sitting off the field because of the bye. Um, I, I don't want to say that, you know, you, you're looking to like trade Chubb or, you know, you're not sitting him clearly. But how, how what's what's the worry factor here that Hunt's going to take a significant portion of not just snaps but touches? Because I've even I, I looked back and I did look back at week eight and nine to be like, well, how many carries? And he still got twenty carries, so he's still getting the work. He's just not on the field as much, so that's I think okay. But what's the yeah. worry that Hunt is going to take some of these carries and some of these pass catches away from Chubb? A significant I mean, amount that it's going to matter. The big worry here is, I don't remember if it was last week's game or maybe in week eight, where Cleveland had like a third down and, and three yards or something to go multiple times, and they did not have Chubb out on the field. I mean, he's one of the best rushers in the league right now. And, you know, that's what all the analysts were, were saying on the show I was watching. I think it was on NFL Network. And they were like, oh, we don't understand. We don't understand why this guy's not on the field. This is a coaching, you know, issue here. This this could have gotten you into the first down. It could have gotten you into the end zone, you know, whatever it was. So maybe in that situation, if they get Hunt in on that, he still could get it because he's, he's a talented back. Um, he is. Everything Definitely that I read – up to a few weeks ago was saying, yeah, he's coming back, but Chubb's still the guy. But based on this, this drop in, in the snap share over the past two weeks, I don't know, man. And, and Cleveland is kind of, you know, their own dumpster fire as it is. <laughs> yeah, anyway, sputtering big time. Baker taking, you know, a major <laughs> step back. Odell's not even getting the ball, which I don't understand. Um, so yeah, Freddie Kitchens is is working his way onto a pretty hot seat right now, and uh, I think that that that's going to be a real factor in this this split is what he can do to utilize both of these backs mm -hmm. successfully, and and get each of them shares of the ball to keep them happy, while also keeping Odell happy and and getting Baker somehow back on track. I mean, he's still got basically, you know, a, a little over a third of the season left here. For fantasy, it's, you know, only three, four weeks. Yeah. So, I, look, I, I agree with you. I think there's legit worry. Um, I, I think what's going to – my my gut is that 
Chubb's going to be the predominant runner, and Hunt would be the change of pace guy. And it could be yeah. enough for Hunt to carry flex value. We don't know yet. This week, I am absolutely not starting Hunt. I did pick him up in two leagues that he got dropped in. I had, like, garbage at the back of my bench. I was like, I'll take a shot on Kareem Hunt and see what happens. Um, uh, yeah. So, you know, he's sitting on my bench. Yeah, one league, is, I'm getting. I'm in bye week hell, and we'll get to that as well. Um, I'm starting J.D. McKissick over him because it's like, uh, I guess I know what McKissick's role is, <laughs> so I'm going to roll with that. I mean, they're playing the Bears. That's not great, but whatever. I mean, Hunt could literally get, like, two catches, and that's be it because he's not played in nine weeks, yeah. uh, plus all of the end of last year. So who knows? Um yeah, man, it's 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 a weird one, and you're you're kind of right there on the Freddie Kitchens thing. I want I wanted to touch on that for a minute. Like, I already think he is on the hot seat, man. This team had Super yeah. Bowl oh, aspirations, like for real, and they were legit right to have them. Their defense was supposed to be good. The offense was supposed to just be nasty good. Um, yeah, maybe they all got in their own heads a little too much, but Freddie Kitchens has made so many bad decisions. And I was listening to the Fantasy Alarm show on the way home from work the other day. They said they started calling him Freddie Bathrooms, um, which is pretty damn funny. <laughs> so give give uh, Howard Bender credit for that one. That's pretty damn funny. Um, so yeah, it's uh. This is just another one of those like you're not sitting Chubb, you're you're not starting Hunt, but in DFS I don't think you know I wouldn't be touching either one of these guys. Um, yeah, you know, I just don't think it's the right spot. You just don't know. Like you don't play the super super unknown in D- DFS, you know, to this degree where Chubb's probably still at a relatively high price because he is talented. Uh, you, you just yeah. don't do it. So. All right, moving on to the Washington Redskins. And, um, yeah, look, nothing's really great here, right? Adrian Peterson's kind of had a couple of decent games here lately, at least yardage-wise. Um, unfortunately, Thompson's been out, and who, know, who knows how long he's going to be out. Wendell Smallwood has played a bunch, but it's been a non-factor. So this is Adrian Peterson. But now, after this week's bye week for them, Darius Geis is back. And if you remember in week one, when Darius Geis was active, now granted this was with uh, Jay Gruden, Adrian Peterson was not active. Now, I don't think anybody agreed with that decision except for Jay Gruden. (laughs) Um, And lo and behold, Darius Geis got injured week one. Ah, shocker. Um, But... Now that he's going to be back starting week 11, I mean, what are we thinking here as far as workload split? Let's just, let's for now say Chris Thompson isn't back because he hasn't even attempted to practice apparently. So it doesn't really sound like he's going to be on track to return in week 11. Um, But let's just assume it's Adrian Peterson, Darius Geis only. I mean, AP has been good. I mean, 100 plus yards in multiple games here. Is this AP, you know, 60, 70% and Geis 30%? And, and, you know, what are we looking at, like, carry load, target load type of thing? I mean, the nice thing here is that we, we've kind of already talked about how Bill Callahan wants to focus on the run and, and has done so since he's taken over for Gruden. Um, I, I think he's going to try to maybe work him in slow, next week um and see how he does like i mean this this guy's been injured his entire nfl career so mm-hmm. you don't want to keep him there um I, I think you have to take it slow with him at least for a week maybe two but then if if he's successful i think it could come down to a 50 50 or he takes over ap outright um, I mean, I love Peterson. I, I've been a fan of his for since he broke into the league. Honestly, uh, he's won me multiple championships, multiple years. And, you know, I always end up finding a way to get him on my team at some point when he still plays, even though he's on this dumpster fire of a team that you like for some reason. Uh, um, <laughs> like, 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 sort of. likes a strong word at this point. Used to, 
Um, oh. Yeah, I, I just think that, you know, his age has caught up to him. He's had some good games this year, but I think that he needs to, like, start to fade off a little more. You know, Geis is going to be their, their back of the future, assuming he stays Hopefully. healthy. Um, you know, Thompson, depending on when he gets back, I still see him more as, as the passing down back. Mm -hmm. You know, that's really what he's been his, his entire career. Well, you say that Um, though, but guys can catch for the ball too. And that's the thing. Like Peterson's never been that guy. Right. So that's always why Thompson, like when it was AP and Pete and and Thompson, or even when Alfred Morris and Thompson, were like that was always the way Thompson kept his value. When Geis yeah. is there, like you got to worry that Geis can just stay on the field at third down if he can stay healthy. Um, but yeah, I mean, yeah. I, I agree with you, man. Like Tom, Peterson's got to, he's going to have these games right where he can go one, two, three games in a row where he can just carry the load. But mm-hmm. I think after you know he couldn't, I don't think he could do it for a whole season. I mean, it's definitely getting up there in age. You know, he's got a couple of seasons where he's been hurt completely, so yeah. that helps. But age is age, man. Like that's not not gonna. I mean, I know he's he's a cyborg, but <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, he's really he, yeah he he's just kind of a freak of health nature. So, I, you know, I, I love the longevity that he brings. I love that he's still going at it. Um, but that that could very well be you know Geis's entrance in, similar to DJ when we were talking about him earlier. He might be utilized more this week in the passing game with Thompson being out and letting him get you know his legs back under him, getting into a little yeah. bit more of game shape. I know he's been practicing a little bit. Um, yeah, full practice today, two weeks or so. So you know they're on the bye this week. I think Callahan really needs to take this week off to scheme for him and really figure out where he can get him involved and, and not put him in bad situations where he could potentially re injure himself or whatever. I mean, obviously injuries can happen on every play, but um, I think he needs to just really focus on that. And if no, it makes, it makes sense to me, man. I I think, and, and the one, the one thing I would say is, at this point, you know, it helped that um, quarterback, dang it, Keenum, got hurt yeah, Keenum. again, right? So, you know, they're, they're kind of forced to play Dwayne Haskins. Uh, I think Keenum could play this week. It sounds like he could, but uh, they're just going with Keenum. So they're going with his youth movement, right? Um, yeah. The youth movement means go with guys, man. You got to see what you have with him. Like you haven't had the chance yet, so let's do it now. Um, you know, but I don't think you want to put him in a spot where he's carrying the ball twenty five times a game, or at least touching the ball twenty five, thirty times a game, uh, because of his injury, his injury history. I think you want to bring it along slowly, you know, 15, maybe 20 touches a game between the run and the pass at best uh, for the rest of the season. Look, you're going nowhere. Just let's see what you got. Let's see if he can hold up for, you know, for six, seven games, right? Um, Yeah. And just hopefully he gets in some some conditioning and and some reps for next season and and go for it that way. Um, But, yeah. So that's that's all we've got for these crowded backfields. Um, we've actually got a, a, a headline that actually makes one backfield a little more uncrowded. So we'll get to that here in just a second. But uh, yeah, those are always interesting. I mean, I've got like I said, I've gotten a bunch of like trade questions where literally somebody was like, "Should I trade Chubb?" And I forget who it was. It was like, "I'll trade." Oh, they they were trying to trade David Johnson. And I forget who it was, the receiver for like AJ Green and Chubb. And I was like, no, like no. I get you're trying to move off David Johnson, but you're moving to another tricky situation with Chubb. And yeah, if AJ Green were actually healthy, then this was early morning, by the way. 
yeah. then the upgrade for the receiver you're getting is probably awesome, but I just it's too risky. Um, so I just I, I said no, but like and I also got other questions about David Johnson. I got other ones about like Hunt, like what do you think? Like it just ton like so this is on people's minds and for good reason. I mean these are backfields that people thought they could rely on this year and the hell maybe not. So it really stinks. Um, but anyway, man, let's get to the headlines for the week 10. Week 10 buys, like I said, by week hell, dude. Last week was four teams, and they were pretty rough four teams for um, for, for fantasy owners. Oh, and we got another oh, flag, maybe not. Anyway, week 10 buys. Uh, so we got the Denver Broncos, Jacksonville Jaguars, Houston Texans, Philadelphia Eagles, New England Patriots, and the Redskins. So... Uh, not a ton of firepower here. Um, not as much as last week as far as like, you know, super big names, mainly because like the Redskins and no offense to your Philly Eagles, but uh, the Eagles are kind of bleh as far as fantasy goes, in my opinion now. It's hard to start a lot of those guys on yeah. offense. Uh, but, you know, the Jags was for net. You got Den- <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I can't even start Wentz anymore. I loved him coming into this year. <laughs> Um, so did I, man. And and literally started David Denver Carr over him last week, and it worked. Um, and the Denver Broncos, I, you know, you I got didn't claim I, Denver Broncos. You got Lindsey and and um, you know Sutton and those guys. So uh, Houston's big, obviously. The Patriots is. Uh, I mean, there's always somebody who's good there, and you know, so obviously Edelman, and I think Edelman yeah. Michelle. But other than that, it's kind of always tough to know who, but. It's just a lot of bodies on by. And so when you're dealing with all the injuries and the uncertainty, and then you're dealing with six teams on by, it's a rough week for, for setting lineups. It really is. Um, and more uncertainty came our way. Uh, Mark Walton, Miami Dolphins running back after Drake got traded, was suspended four games for violating the league's personal conduct rules. This kind of feels like Miami went, oh, we won a game? Oh, here, take this. <laughs> we, yeah. don't, we don't. We don't want to win anymore, um, <sighs> right? Look, guys, so, we're really trying to tank. What are you doing? <laughs> we went sixteen and zero once. Now we want to go in zero and sixteen. Yeah, guys. Now, Come now, on. take or no? I here, guess they here. went. What, the Super Bowl year was it eighteen and zero? Maybe. Um. Well, yeah. If you count I, the playoffs, I, play like, I, th- I want to say it might have been eighteen and zero. Maybe, yeah, might 18 have been, or 19. It might have been 16. I don't know. Whatever. Yeah. I know they were undefeated during the regular season Yeah, in their, their championship year there. So, uh, I don't know. Just, just stepping so back crappy. to the buys here. Uh, I mean, I, I've got to rant about this because I hate these six-week – sorry, six-team bye weeks. Um, There's so many two-week bye weeks. Why the hell not do the running back depth chart update because I this did is see ridiculous. that I did see that I, I mean that's that was my opening it's like what the hell is this come on NFL it's the worst I mean, we, man we talk about it every year but you have three weeks where you only have two teams sitting okay I get the math there's 30 teams in the league you know you want to keep it consistent whatever um or no is there 32 am I in 32 <laughs> Welcome to 2019. <laughs> There's 32 teams in the league. How the hell is it this complicated to do math? Um, I, I could ask myself the same. <laughs> it's uh, like, oh, okay. <laughs> but it, make it eight weeks, four teams every week. Why the hell do you only want to take two teams out three times and then six teams out another time? It's it's asinine. Get over it. Shorten the 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 overall span of bye weeks, and let these guys play. I mean, week four bye. What the no, hell is it's that? So dumb. It doesn't like, make oh, any we've sense. We've gone zero and three. We really need it. Okay, fine. You know, <laughs> congratulations, Jets. You were on the week four bye. But yeah, I, this just yeah. pisses me off. It's, I, it's I, I so hate bad, this. Man. I hate it from a fan standpoint, not necessarily just from the fantasy standpoint. Red but from a fan sucks standpoint, this week. <laughs> it's like it's ridiculous. Well, because not only do you get six teams on by for red zone, think about it. It's just watching, right? You watch like even not just red zone, even if you're watching you might like as well the watch ticket. the same game. 
Red Zone's like, oh, we're going to go to this game, so, oh, and we're going to this one. Not only do you but, get the that first one by, you get the Sunday night game, you get the Monday night game, you get the Thursday night game now, because they had to force that down our throats, and it usually sucks. Uh, so you get so many, you, the, like, Red Zone on this week is pretty pointless, but I'll still watch it, because <laughs> it's better than watching the Redskins. All right, so Mark Walton yep. suspended. I mean, are we excited about Kalen Ballage? I don't know what to do here. I was. Mark Walton was actually was, getting getting it done, man. Like it wasn't great, but it was useful. Um, Kalen Ballage, yeah. though, eh. I had high hopes for him, but it, you know, not. I mean, everybody working. did. He was like one of the biggest sleeper type running backs until he was getting everybody all started the talking works. about him. He was getting all the work, man, in the preseason, getting the first team snaps, yeah. and then the season started. And he decided to run for two yards a carry. Good work, bro. <laughs> so, are we excited about two yards a carry? He does have two touchdowns. <laughs> How the hell does he have two touchdowns? <laughs> That doesn't make any sense. I don't know, but it's only two more than I have, so whatever. Um, I just think that, you know, ballots ballot could be okay. They need to have some sort of running game. You know, you've got the beard there, and he's probably due for about two more really solid 400-plus games um, and maybe like six touchdowns between the two. So you'll have that, but then he'll he'll, he'll turn fall into back a pumpkin, into, you know, into the beard. Uh, so they they're gonna have to run the ball at some point, you know. But this this could be a youth movement thing here too, and they're gonna see what they have with uh, with Miles Gaskin and and Laird. Oh, yeah, that's true. See what see what they can do. I mean, assuming Ballage still keeps his two point whatever you know yards per carry going. They can't. They can't run with that literally uh, no. for long. So, no, that that's true. I mean, yeah, I, I'm not really buying into it. I mean, if you're totally desperate, I I guess pick up Ballage and you know see what you can get. But I I wasn't even looking for him on the waiver wire. I just didn't care. Yeah. Um, so follow up question then. Um, I'm going to go ahead and, and, again, just throw myself back under the bus for the 30-team thing because that's just just piss poor that, <laughs> that I can somehow be called an analyst. I don't necessarily <laughs> think of myself as one, but I put it down for the various, you know, Scott Fish Bowls and, and Raz Bowls that we're trying to get into. Sure, I'm an analyst. Um, we, all, we all make mistakes. But, okay, you, you've got Miami and you've got Washington, so those were the two teams I guess I just wasn't counting. Um Hey, to be fair, but, <laughs> to be fair, they all have better records than the Cincinnati Bengals. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> all right, so there's 29 teams <laughs> in the league. Um, I was way off again. <laughs> anyway, speaking of, none of these 29 teams should ever decide that bringing Antonio Brown to their team is a good idea. Seattle, stop. You got a weed smoking Josh Gordon. You're mm. good. <clears throat> Let him live where he needs to live in Washington, where it's legal. He's going to be fantastic. Uh, we'll get to him. But, I mean, AB w- was supposed to meet with the NFL to discuss this return. You know, it was supposed to be set up for next week. I mean, now all of a sudden he sends these expletive laden tweets out earlier today erases them and then comes back with a second one you know that's shorter but still ridiculous erases that one i'm just kidding guys i'm just kidding i'm just very frustrated you know they're taking my blood and money and sweat and money and blah 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 first of all i don't remember where we said this guy went to college if he went to college he didn't learn a damn thing in English class because his tweets are ridiculous. Looks like a three-year-old wrote them. Learn how to spell. If you're going to give someone the business via wording, do it right. Spell it right. Get your grammar right. Don't look like a jackass more than you already do. 
God. Go, Idiot. Go, at least go get Sorry. somebody in PR, right? Like, go get a PR rep. Grammar police um, coming through. Yeah, you are Mr. Grammar police, but it is Central Michigan, by the way, if you if you were wondering. Thank the Chippewas. Yeah, dude, I don't I know don't. what to do with AB. You know, we put it here on the on on the schedule to talk about Antonio Brown is is you know like you said was supposed to be getting a, a meeting with the NFL who knows if it'll actually happen now the reason the know. big reason the big reason why I brought it up is because honestly one of the teams he's being linked to because of Djax is yeah, the I Eagles know. would you take it dude I mean Antonio no. Brown dude if he's if he's right no if he's right I mean he's right I mean, look, I, I mean, if if his name is cleared, okay, great. Your name's already been drugged through the mud. I mean, so what? I mean, people are still going to have an opinion about you, regardless. Um, you know, a negative opinion, I would mm-hmm. think. Um, and then especially, you know, people like me who see those tweets, <laughs> it's already negative. Right. Um, but you can't go off and say F you to the NFL and then say, <laughs> oh, I, oh, I'm sorry, guys. Uh, are we still meeting tomorrow or next week? Are we still on for that? You know, that that wasn't me. That was a, the hacked account. Uh, I, I don't know. I don't it's know. Like the... Get out of here. No, it's like the trying Eagles to... need to they, – they've already looked at bringing Jordan Matthews back in for the third time. Oh. I think he's actually back on the team. Oh, um, I'm sorry. I missed I mean, that dude, one. He, I'm sorry. He no. did okay no. last year when they brought him back. They, I mean, dude, they, he knows they the offense. Need, they need someone more than Jordan Matthews. They Don't need a, They need to stretch the field guy, even if he's like not super good. Like they just need a guy who can like stretch the field, take some of the underneath routes away from Alshon. You know, all the out, underneath coverage I meant from away from Alshon. Yeah. Let Ertz be able to play the seam. Everybody just plays Ertz up the seam, plays Alshon underneath, and then you got nothing else. I mean, it, Aguilar and his T Rex no, arms I, I is not. over. So, I mean, he I should be your favorite player. It. You're a T Rex fan. You know, Aguilar should be your favorite player. Who? Aguilar? <laughs> his T Rex arms. Come on, man. You're a no. T Rex fan. I'll just, I mean, know. we might as well bring Todd <laughs> Pinkston back and, you know, and see which one of them can alligator better. Oh no! Uh, uh, have a watch. So okay, watch okay. Dougie contest or whatever. All right. The so so called. let's let let's take this away from like a personal NFL. We don't like AB level. Like okay, I don't think anybody likes AB. Like I love Cream Hunt. I picked him up for my damn fantasy team. AB, if he comes back, if he comes first. back, are you taking a chance on him? From a fantasy standpoint, I, I have thought about it multiple yeah, right. times. And that was, you know, before this latest <clears throat> barrage of rants. Uh, I also don't think Twitter, he was going to get but, cleared for this year anyway. But regardless of the fact, like, I think, you know, if well, we for don't, some yeah, random reason he was going to get cleared this year, I, 100% I would have taken a chance on him. Yeah. But that's the thing that they also said, too, what I was reading earlier is, the NFL is not putting him on, you know, their exempt restricted list, whatever the hell it's called, while this investigation is going on. If, in fact, it comes out and he's cleared, then he signs with a team, yet more information comes out, then he could be put on. So it's like he might get through all of this crap, get on a team, start making his money again, play two games and then they're like oh well we've got another expert witness blah 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 you're gonna go on this list and you lose him again dude's played one game this year yeah. i mean i stayed away from him in every single draft because of i did too the train wreck that it was you know we've talked about that and i, I don't know man i don't i just don't think you can trust him at all i i would almost rather take a shot in fantasy on jordan matthews at this point oh <sighs> That's brutal. Well, so it's speaking brutal, of t- but it's a fact. Yeah. So speaking of taking chance and chances on guys, so we didn't get to talk about this last week because we did the show a day early, and so happens it's happened the day after the day we the night we normally would have done it. Josh Gordon gets signed by 
the Seattle Seahawks. So as you alluded to, he's he's now in good old the state of Washington where uh, a little puff puff pass is is legal. Um, what do we what do we think about this signing? First off, I mean, is this gonna work at all? For him to get high, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, come uh, on. I wonder, like, for for him to soar with the Seahawks, uh, to be determined. I, I mean, look, another guy who's got a ton of talent has plenty of off the field issues. Not like AB's, obviously, but just his own dealing with his own demons, sort of a deal. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, he he played pretty well last year with the Patriots when he was, you know, Mm -hmm. playing Um, this year with the Patriots. I was overall very disappointed with him and I did go after him kind of earlier than I probably should have in drafts and it it burned me a little bit. So I don't know. I I just don't know if, if he was a fit there anymore or, you know, I mean, they had nobody but, else. Although they kept going after guys like A B Yellow. I mean, at that point, like who did yeah, they who were, wouldn't go they to were B, they were kept him, trying you know. to bring in people. They brought in um Demarius Thomas at one point to see what he could do. Like clearly something wasn't right in New England with Gordon and they just kept trying to find a way to replace him. And then yeah. when he got hurt, they were just like, You know what, we're done. Never mind. We can do this without you. Bye. Um Well, yeah, they were still undefeated and Yeah, I mean really at that point like who cares? Reason for that. So, you know, they, they have so much depth at receiver in New England between, you know, I mean, do, obviously Edelman is kind of on though. his own tier. What's that? I mean, they do and they don't, though. Like, I mean, Dorsett's their number two. Like, eh. <laughs> like that's not yeah, but great. His, his touchdown per catch rate or something, or maybe it's per game, was like, is actually pretty damn high. But he hasn't played every game either, so... No, it's, you know, it's, yeah. he's, he's kind of an up and down, but that that's the new England way, man. Of course. If of the course. people in the NFL haven't figured it out yet, everybody here in fantasy has, because you're going to, you're going to Jonas gray somebody one week and then never hear about the guy again. It's like, he's Jimmy Hoffa. Um, you know, <laughs> but, but going back to Gordon here before I digress way too far. I mean, I do think this is a good fit for him. You know, I'm kind of worried about what it does to lock it. Um, but they don't really have any other receivers there. I mean, they well, do. Jaron Brown scored two touchdowns in one week. DK Metcalf well, yeah, has I mean, been they, coming they on Metcalf, strong, but... dude. So I'm not worried as much know. about Lockett as I am Metcalf. And I worry about what it's going to do for him. But, you know, I, I just – I guess the, the question I wrote down here was, you know, are we taking a chance on this guy again, or is this just fool's gold? I'll, I'll be honest. I didn't. I I saw I saw the news come out. I did not rush to the waiver wire, or at that point he was a free agent in every league I was in. I didn't yeah. get him in a single one. I didn't care. I did not care. I, yeah, I think I went back and grabbed him in one league, but our team is in such dire need of anything that scores points. So, <laughs> you know, well, uh, so then what do you realistically this, this, year, this week? I'm starting McKissick and, uh, Oh God, some other horrendous name. I, I don't want to say Gus Edwards. Cause I don't think that's it, but it, it's like, I, I, or my projected running back points are maybe a combined total of 12. So nice. Probably, it's hard probably to another loss. Uh, so okay, so you have Josh Gordon. Now it might take a couple of weeks for him to get involved with the offense fully. But what do you? Yeah. What would be the the ceiling for him? I guess he's not passing Tyler Lockett. So what's the ceiling? Besides no, I, I mean I can definitely see him overtaking Metcalf for sure. Yeah, that's my thought. Um, I think the Metcalf I mean, line, you got to be worried. He, I think he can get into wide receiver three territory. Possibly two. A low end two. But that's... Man. 
That's that's pushing it. That's a hell of a ceiling for a, a, an offense. I mean, I know Russell Wilson is super efficient, but uh, this is still a running team. I don't. That'll yeah, be interesting. Yeah, but it's. It's a name thing. It's just like fantasy football where you've got a name player now coming to your team that people might sleep on. You know, opposing defenses could sleep on the guy at first because we've been there, we've seen this act before, but the second he starts burning you, they're going to pay attention to him. That's going to open up more for Chris Carson and maybe Richard Penny. Um and it's also going to open up more for Wilson to run. You know, they don't have a tight end presence there anymore with Disley being injured for weeks now. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it, it it could hurt Metcalf, but Metcalf could end up being more of like the tight end guy. Um, not, not by size by any means, but target wise. Yeah. Because, I mean, really, you're, you're not doing much with Jaron Brown and David Moore. As it is right now, they've been all right, but they're definitely complimentary pieces. Um, Yeah, yeah, nothing you're getting excited about. Yeah, I mean, it's I I have just kind of made a vow I'm not touching Josh Gordon until he proves me right or until he proves me wrong. I guess I should say. Uh, Yeah, but and and look, maybe maybe I'll eat crow, but I I want nothing to do with this guy. Uh, I, I just. I've seen too many people just get burned by him over and over and over again. So not, not my cup of tea. All right, man. So let's get through the injuries here. You know, we, we got a bunch here. So uh, we'll start with the quarterbacks here. Cam Newton was, I guess you should say finally placed on the IR. I mean, this guy had a Liz Frank injury. It clearly wasn't getting, getting healthy. Uh, and he he's done. So, quick question to you is: Is Cam done in Carolina? Not just this year, but is he done? Quick answer: Yes. <laughs> Allen Allen's done very Allen well. Allen's been solid, dude. Speed. I still bet they go draft somebody. If if uh, I don't think well, Kyle Allen's still, the guy they, for the future. They have Will Greyer there too. I mean, oh, I, we Will don't Greer, know yeah, that's what right. he is. But yeah, yeah, I don't I mean, think he's anything special. I think but you're, no, you're looking at Allen right now. He's the he's the guy. I mean, good, now though. they've There's... had the confidence in him already. Mm-hmm. If they didn't, they would have tried out Grier while they were still nursing mm-hmm. Newton. Agreed. Or they would have put Newton back in and just kept playing this game of dangling him out there to figure out if he's actually going to play this year. They've yep. ended that. That shows their confidence. Done. Move on. Kind of agree, man. Uh, so Jacoby Brissett, MCL sprain from this past week. Um, he's practicing though this week, and yeah. so it's it's looking on the strong side of questionable as far as playing, like on on the good side of questionable as far as playing. Uh, mm-hmm. But it's still going to be a game time decision. Uh, so so keep an eye out for that one. Matt Ryan had the bye week to recover from the ankle injury. Uh, looking like he'll be good to go in week 10, but make sure you keep an eye on that one as well. Uh, and then Pat- Patrick Mahomes has not been fully cleared yet, but it's looking like there's almost no way he won't play. I mean, he's, I mean, <laughs> if you saw the, the end of the game last week where he was like bouncing around on the field, like an idiot, like dude, calm down. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, all right. What do we got for the rest of these injuries, man? R- 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 yeah. R- all right. Rip through that. So Sorry. running backs, we got James Conner still dealing with the shoulder injury. He suffered late in week nine. He is he was earlier this morning questionable, but now it's showing that he's not expected to play. Uh, he's, he's Alvin Kamara. <laughs> what's that? He's already he's, been. He's, dude, okay. he's, he's out, dude. Like, he's not playing. Yeah. That's that that hurts me in a couple of leagues. Uh, including Fantasy Six Pack. Thank you, Garrick, for your $400 uh, claims on both Ballage and uh, McKissick, I believe. I, I don't understand that. Wow. I, I don't understand that. I, I've had, I had like $44 left, and I think I put it on both of them just to see if I got one, and then I see that 
this morning or yesterday morning. That's why, sometimes it's why you save money, but I mean, I guarantee he, he missed out on yeah, players. Yeah, but he's that... one and eight. Come on, Garrick. But that's why he threw four hundred bucks on them. Because why not? <laughs> that's my spoiler. All right. Anyway, it's not how any of this works. Kamara <laughs> had the bye week. All right, to rest Geico commercial. Knee and ankle. Um, he's looking very likely to play this week now, uh, according to Sean Payton. Mm-hmm. But don't sleep on Latavius Murray. Uh, he mm-hmm. could still vulture some carries um, and, and maybe some goal line work. He's coming off a huge game from two weeks ago. Uh, mm-hmm. Lev Bell was limited Thursday with a knee injury. See what he does. He's got a fairly juicy matchup against the Giants this weekend. If By the way, he can play. Quick note on that one. I know everybody thinks Ty Montgomery's the guy. Bilal Powell. It's got to be Powell. This is Bilal I mean, I think... Powell. Ty Montgomery's role will not change. He is Ty Montgomery. That is what he does. Yeah. He is either backfield I, I pass catcher. Montgomery in Bilal one league just Powell. Because I didn't have. Powell out there, but yeah, I, I 100% agree that, that mm-hmm. Powell would be the go-to. Um, we already talked about DJ and Edmonds. Sounds like DJ should suit up with his uh, back and ankle injuries, but Edmonds will miss another week. Um, he's still dealing with that hammy injury. Uh, receivers, we already talked about DJX. He is gone for the year at this point. You know, maybe could come back postseason for the NFL, which has no bearing on fantasy whatsoever. Drop them in all your leagues, unless, like me, you're just a fan and you want to waste an IR spot on them. Go for it. <laughs> um, he played a little bit last week, only to further re-injure himself. So, yeah. congratulations on that, Eagles. Um, Preston Williams also put on the IR uh, with his own ACL injury. He is gone for the season. Brandon Cooks and Sterling Shepard both dealing with concussions still. Um, I don't think either one will play. I mean, nope. Shepard, Shepard I saw earlier today, is going to see a specialist. So he is highly questionable there's, for this week. There's talk that like the – some of his teammates are worried that his career is over. Yeah. Because they're just like, I, you know, he's just like, nope, over. I mean, it, this keeps it, coming it back. Could be. So, yeah. It sucks. And but. Cooks, as we said last week, you know, the Rams are taking it day at a time and, and doing what's best for him. So he, he doesn't sound like he's that far behind Shepard, unfortunately. Um, T.Y. Hilton, Calf, and Paris Campbell, Hand, are – both expected to miss a few weeks. So bring on your Zach Pascals and your Chester Rogers is, 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 is. Um, <laughs> nice. Zach Pascal. We, we don't have Scott fishbowl on here. I picked this guy up like a week or two ago, just as a flyer. And, you know, when I first heard about, you know, or first saw that he was having a couple of good games and then a couple of down games, I went out and I grabbed him. So, of course, what do I do? I went out and dropped him for, I believe, Jay Ajayi for his uh, quote-unquote Jay Ajayi. go practice wow. with Detroit. Wow. Good work. And then, <laughs> like an hour later, the news comes out that T.Y. T.Y. wasn't Hill playing out. last week. And I went like... to go try to re-grab him, and somebody had already grabbed him. Good so. work. All right, so the That's last how my Scott Fishbowl season has, has been going. Well, yeah, your, your Scott Fishbowl season started on a horrible note in like the first week of August when Andrew yeah. Andrew Luck was like, you know what, I don't really want to do this anymore. So the last yeah. wide receiver injury I want to talk about, uh, I kind of think it's funny here. So, so you know, we we share the notes with our fun producer in the background here, Keith, and. Uh, so we, we had originally up here that, you know, AJ Green was tentative. We wasn't really sure. And then in big red letters, like, warning, warning, Robinson, AJ Green will not play this week. Like, <laughs> like you think we can't read normal stuff? <laughs> it's funny. Yeah. Like, got it. Okay. I, but everybody, I, I, in I case you're wondering. I the names today, so that <laughs> stood out a little bit more. But in case uh, you're wondering, AJ Green is out. That's great. And he's. 
Probably out of definitely. It almost sounds like it's a little bit of like he wasn't truly 100% and then he didn't get his contract extension. So he was just like, you know what? We're 0 and 9 or 0 and 8 or whatever this crap is. Like, y'all have fun without me. And just was like, I'm out. So I don't blame him at all. And there's like all this, all these Twitter messages about him being like, you know what? There's, there's 32 teams. I'll figure it out later. Blah, 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 blah. Like, this sounds like it's a little bit of a issue just with the team, not just his health. So yeah, so I mean, here again, trade deadlines obviously passed, and he stayed with the Bengals. I know. Is this his last hurrah That's with the Bengals? Is he done? I wouldn't be surprised if it isn't. I wouldn't be surprised if it is. Wait, <laughs> I was like, sorry. Um, I'm, I'm done with my double, beer, by the way. So maybe that was, there. I'm done with Come my on. beer, so that I'm gonna blame it on you know that. Who you're talking <laughs> to here? <laughs> Shut up. All right. <laughs> moving on here. Week 10 picks. We got our highest and lowest scoring fantasy games. All right. My I'll highest scoring go. game here is, yeah, obviously I'm already talking. Uh, Arizona Tampa, baby. This game is going to be a debacle of defenseless uh, play. And, you know, both teams are susceptible to getting points run up on them. So and both I mean, offenses this, this are is like solid. a DFS. So yeah, this, this, this game is like a be... DFS dream. Mm-hmm. Yet I will pick probably everybody in this game as well as some guys from your game and, and I'll not make any money. Um, <laughs> everybody will just have a, a down week. So it'll be fantastic. Like every week I play DFS. This will be the so, week that, you know, Mike Evans decides to catch three passes for 25 yards and you've got him owned everywhere. Yeah. So mine is Falcons and Saints. I think these are the two obvious ones. Um, you know, yeah. yes, the Saints defense is solid and the Falcons are going to turn that ball over probably three times. But, and so. The Saints defense will probably do fairly well is because they're going to turn the ball over. They're going to get a bunch of sacks. But the Falcons will get behind by 20, and they decide they're going to have to pass the ball the last two and a half quarters, and they're going to end up just racking up a bunch of yards with Julio and Ridley yeah. and Hooper. And so the fantasy points will come there for them, and the Saints obviously are going to just rack up points, especially with Carmara back. So I love this game. Yeah. Yeah, that was one I was I was looking at as well, but ha- had to go with the other one. So no, I, I do like yours game a little of the bit week. better. <laughs> What's that? I do I do like yours a little better, even though it's not as sexy yeah. a names. It's uh, I think fantasy wise, we're gonna get some monster games out of that one. Absolutely. Um, my loser game of the week is Buffalo at Cleveland. We've already talked about Cleveland, and the best thing I saw today was like four or five different memes of Mayfield and his presser last week with his <laughs> silly little attempt at a mustache. And it was just like talking about, you know, how he's like a dad going out for a late night pack of smokes and, you know, this and this and how he placed fourth in a, you know, Halloween contest dressed up as Gardner <laughs> Minshew. Uh, so <laughs> it was pretty funny. I'll I didn't see that one. And, That's good. And, and tweeted out, um, but that, that was good. And Buffalo, uh, Singletary finally had a nice showing and and had a hell of a game last week. Um, but hey, just... Bob Long said buy low, and we were yeah, I didn't move on that at all for some reason. I was trying to in a couple of leagues, but no one was having it. So, um, that's the game I I don't see a lot going on in. Yeah, so mine's Jets and Giants. There were like I think there could be a couple sneaky players here that like you know one or two, and obviously Saquon, you know, is a guy. Bell, you know, you hope finally turns it around. Yeah, you know, maybe we get one of the quarterbacks to play well. Maybe we get one of the receivers to go well, you know, play well. But I think overall this game's just going to be kind of a like, eh, really like. What the hell is this game doing on television? Like, let's just... Hey, this is one of the games I don't care if it's ever on Red Zone. Like, bye, I don't care, you know? Yeah. <laughs> it's like the other week when it was, like, Miami and Redskins. People were making fun of it on Twitter. This is right up there. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I, I, I'm just not loving this see, game from a fantasy... I could see Red Zone, like, flipping to this when it's literally on the one, not even into the right. Red Zone. 
and it'll be on the one and they'll do whatever and then all of a sudden it's gonna like show Lev Bell like diving over and as soon as the ball hits it's gonna like all right let's cut away to the blah 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 game. <laughs> Yeah, no, like, literally, that's, that's like, the only time you saw the Redskins-Miami game is when it was in the fourth quarter, and it just happened to be a close game. And so they were yeah. like, well, it's 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 a one-score game, and they're within 40 yards, so we might as well show it because nothing else is going on. So, yeah, um, yeah I feel like this is going to be a lot of that. Exactly. So, so, I mean, what do you got for your sleeper quarterback? Uh, sticking with that horrendous <laughs> yeah, game, I'm going to go with Daniel Jones, Danny Dimes, uh, the Jets have been absolutely torched in their past two games, both against backup quarterbacks, to the tune of 567 yards, six touchdowns, and zero interceptions. Uh, that would be the Beard and some other backup. I don't even remember who the hell the Jets played. Um, I don't know. It's not, it's not coming to me, but... Backup quarterbacks. Danny Dimes, technically a backup quarterback. Uh, now he's the you know the the head starter, but I think he can have a uh, very very good game. Yeah, not a bad one. So mine, uh, that wasn't a lot this week. The bye weeks are are hurting it. Mine's gonna be Kirk Cousins. I mean, I know Dallas has got a, a fairly solid pass defense. They, they've been beat up a couple different times, but um, overall been pretty pretty good this year. But Kirk Cousins, after his very, very slow start, has pa- has gotten 20-plus points in his four, of it, four out of his last five games. And, yeah, he's probably not going to have Adam Thielen, but, I mean, he's done well without Adam Thielen there before. So, you know, he's utilizing Irv Smith. He's obviously utilizing Diggs. Uh, you've got Cook out of the backfield. You've got... Uh, BC Johnson, those guys. I mean, they'll, they'll step up and get the job done. So, yeah, Kirk Cousins could be a, an interesting sleeper pick. Yeah, Jaguars, Gardner Minshew. That's who it was. There you go. So, I was More like, stash. I know it's, it's a name that's right on the tip of my tongue because I probably just mentioned it. Um, yeah, anyway. You did. Ty Johnson is my running back. Um, I, I really think, and it's kind of a, a Johnson McKissick duel, you know, sleeper pick, but. Um, Interestingly I, I enough mind. that you say that. <laughs> yeah. I just saw the notes on the other side <laughs> of the page there. So I'll uh, just go ahead and finish this one out for both of us. Uh, <laughs> Detroit, in my mind, really needs to establish the run against Chicago. They've, they've got a weaker run defense. You now they gave up 82 yards and a touchdown to Jordan Howard in uh, last week's game with the Eagles. Um, you know, Howard's really kind of come on of late as a more of a running back. Um, plus, he had some revenge built into this game as it was. So that helped us cause. But it, it's still a weaker defense. So, yeah. Who so, do you have, Joe? I'm so mine is J.D. McKissick. Uh, you know, apparently for some weird reason, we like this Detroit backfield, <laughs> which has been awful. But uh, this probably Terrible. says a lot about the fact that there's six teams on by and there's not a lot of sleeper action going on. Uh, as you crack another beer, I'm jealous. Uh, Why not? <laughs> yeah, I'm too far away from my fridge. I'd have to like get up and leave the screen, and I can't do it. So whatever. Um, Why well, I grabbed mine before? Yeah, well, you know started. what? You suck. Um, so, Jenny McKissick, as a, can I finish this, please? Jenny McKissick, uh, I actually think the running game is going to be pathetic for the Detroit Lions, as it always is. But, you know, he at least catches passes out of the backfield. So, like, in PPR leagues, you're going to get, like, five, six catches from this guy, and, and you can use him in flex this week. I, I am, because there's nobody available. <laughs> the bye weeks are killing this week. So, yeah. who's the receiver? All right, let's see if I can not completely screw this one up for you and no, you're fine. Your pick, you're um, fine. The rest of the picks are fine. <laughs> so receiver, I mentioned this name earlier, Chester Rogers. Newsflash: Miami still sucks because they're not even <laughs> involved in my um, top thirty teams. Of yeah, they're, the NFL. On a win- they're on a winning streak. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, that'll end. Um, 
T.Y. And, and Campbell are both out, like we already said. So this gives Rodgers another starting opportunity. He had a pretty solid week last week um, along with Pascal. But Pascal's obviously ranked uh, within the top uh, 30, I believe. So that's uh, beyond our, our sleeper number here. So who you got? Mine is going to be Anthony Miller. Um and I know people are probably going like, puke, what the hell did he mean, Anthony Miller? Take a look back, man. This guy had two weeks in a row where he was starting to like take steps forward and be the guy that we thought he was going to be. Like It wasn't great, but it was progress, right? It was <laughs> – that's that's all I can say. It was, it was progress. Like, he had like nine points in fantasy uh, for two weeks in a row. Last week he had a huge road bump. It just didn't work what, for whatever reason last week. Um but, you know, this week against the Lions, they have the 22nd rated DVO pass defense. So if he can get back on track, it can be this week against 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 the Lions. Sorry, excuse me. Yeah, I, I do Ooh, like Miller. There, I've so. kind of been debating on He's talented, put, man. He putting really him is. on this page, you know, in this in this spot for the past couple of weeks and he's proved it uh, Problem is, Trubisky's just been god awful like it's so, so bad. bad um so that that's the only worry man but i mean like these sleeper picks are always hard i mean we're gonna yeah. miss more often than not so yeah um, um my bust pick here for quarterback this was this was tough because it, it there's just so many guys that i don't really like that are in the top 10, but have great matchups. So, right, right. I, I was the same I, way, but you picked the one guy I would have absolutely gone after. So, but that's cool. Yeah. That's, that's did, probably you, why I started this page today and did it early. Cause <laughs> I was like, I'm going to take all of the picks that Joe yes. wants. And yes. He can did. suck it. Uh, Dak Prescott. I mean, I, I hate the Cowboys as it is. Minnesota's been fairly solid against opposing quarterbacks. Um, I mean, they've had a couple of games where they've gotten blown out by the guys, but usually they keep the guys in check. And and I think Dallas really needs to just try to get Zeke the ball early and often in this game because Minnesota's rush defense is solid. Um, They're very good. So I think they're still going to try – to get him involved early enough to, you know, make it, make it take some pressure off of Dak. Um, but I just, I'm hoping cousins, as you said, wins that matchup between those two guys handily. <laughs> yeah. I think every non cowboy fan thinks that. So mine, I feel like a broken record here, but Aaron Rodgers. Um, <laughs> I mean, hey, I've been right a lot more than I've been wrong this year. When I've yeah. him. It's pretty crazy. Um, you know, th- this week, week, I mean, last year week, we'll just do season long bust. Yeah, Aaron right. Rodgers, quarterback. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, last week I was spot on. It was awful, yeah. dude, against the Chargers. Uh, and this week he goes mm-hmm. up against Carolina, and I mean, their third wow. best pass defense according to DVOA. Uh, so it's it's not looking like a great matchup for them. You know, the only saving grace for him, I think, at this point would be that, like, last week maybe they just kind of got off sync with Devontae Adams coming back and things just weren't clicking. And so now with him getting another week in, it's going to work. But I don't know. I, I just – I don't feel great starting Aaron Rodgers this week. But I'm doing it in one league. So Yeah. All right, who's your running he, back? He was – he was the other one I was could potentially looking at, but uh, running back, uh, Chris Carson, San Francisco defense. That that's that's all you need to know. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, and that was the guy that I initially looked at, then saw your notes and went, "Well, okay, awesome." <laughs> so, um, Hurricane. Yep. Yeah, you pretty much just fucking blew me off the page with that one. All right. Um, I, there wasn't a lot. Like the bus running backs, I agreed with like so many of the rankings. So, yeah, I went with Freeman, Devonta Freeman. Uh, the Falcons 
are likely, like I mentioned before, are going to fall behind early. And unless Freeman gets one of those games in PP, you know, in PPR leagues or even half PPR leagues where he, he's catching eight, nine passes, which he has done a couple of weeks, but if he only gets like three or four, and he only gets you know thirty yards rushing, you're screwed. <laughs> and I have a feeling it's going to be one, yeah. of, you know, one of the latter. So, uh, so it's. Freeman, Freeman will be the guy I go with. Yeah. The only saving grace for him is that Edo Smith is still dealing with yes. concussion symptoms of his Absolutely. own. And I, we didn't mention it because, I mean, who the hell is starting Edo Smith anyways? Oh, wait. Unless it's week 10 and he's healthy and there's 15 teams on by. <laughs> um, <laughs> receivers. I'm going with Detroit. So we both love the Detroit running backs. But I hate the Detroit receivers. That's Galladay. That's Jones. You know, Detroit really needs to run the ball. Like I said, that's how they're going to beat Chicago in Chicago, which is tough enough as it is. But their pass defense is so much stronger than their run defense. And, you know, so these guys are both going to have an uphill battle. You know, Stafford's going to have uh, have a hard time getting the ball out, I think. So they're going to have to either do a lot of short underneath routes to try to do anything to move the ball, but I think they need to just run it. Just get out, get the guys out, and do some short passes. Unfortunately, dude, that that, that is not going to happen. The Detroit Lions are going to pass the ball 50 times a game because uh, that's all they can do. So yeah, good luck with those. <laughs> I'm still not sure they're going to have awesome weeks, but... Yeah. yeah, they'll be useful enough. I don't think you're benching them in, in most leagues. Um, but anyway, mine is going to be DJ, DK Metcalf. Um, I, I had a tough time picking a, a receiver. I, I basically went with this because San Fran, like you have with Carson. And second is, I mean, Gordon will be active. He'll play a little bit. And I, and I just think it's going gonna, it's gonna to be just enough where it's going to take, you know, just a couple of extra targets away from Metcalf that those were the ones that Metcalf needed to like put him over the top. So that's where I would be avoiding Metcalf if I could this week, but I know that's hard to do week 10. It's very, very hard to do. All right. Yeah. Who's a defense streamer this week? Uh, defense streamer. I am going with KC. Um, Tennessee has given up four plus sacks in six of their nine games and three sacks in one of those other three games. Um, and, and after they've only seeded one turnover in the first five weeks of the season, they've now given up eight turnovers in the last four weeks. So hmm. I, I think that this is a, a game that Kansas city can really jump on. Um, and, you know, granted a lot of that, turnover issue was Marcus Mariota. Uh, but at the same time, Tannehill's also pretty interception prone. So he is. Hey, with Patty not, Mahomes you know, back, you know, it keeps, it keeps the, uh, keeps the other team's, uh, offense off the field. So that's not a bad pick, yeah. man. I like it. Yeah. Mine is going to be the jets. I easily could have gone the, or sorry. Mine was the giants. I easily could have gone the jets, but, the Jets are just a total mess right now. I mean, they're averaging three and a third turnovers a game over the last three games. Um, they've also allowed a ton of sacks, 12 total. Um, I mean, they only have 31 points total in the last three games. I mean, it's just, if there's any game the Giants' crappy defense could do well, it's this one. I mean, but at the same time, like, I easily could have picked the Jets, who are doing almost just as bad um, or, or the Giants because they're doing almost just as bad. But I think I'd rather take my chances with the team not facing Saquon Barkley. That was my thought. So I picked the Giants over the Jets as far as defense streaming. So Yeah, I, I do think it's either one of those. You're right? probably okay. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it, it is what it is. So uh, a couple last-minute news and notes things here. Uh, the other running back that I was looking at in that one league where my team is, uh, what, let me see here, uh, one and eight. That's, a, that's nice. a common theme with a couple of my teams, which really 
Are you are you are you one of the twelve teams in the league, like one of the thirty two? Or is that a ten team league and you don't count? Uh this this one is now a twelve team <laughs> Apparently league. Apparently you didn't get the joke. <laughs> I, I didn't I didn't really hear much of it. You were a little muffled. One more time. I, I said, are you one of the twelve teams or do you not count and there's only ten teams in the league? Like there's only thirty NFL teams now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> Got it. Um, it. It is a it's a twelve team league, but I'm I'm the fourteenth team. So nice. Um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Even better. <laughs> my my running backs that I'm starting are J D McKissick, who's projected for five point two four points, and uh, Daryl Henderson Jr., Ooh. who's projected for five point one three points. So Henderson under twelve points Wait. and under eleven points. Uh, so I was even uh, far off on my thing, and that's the league that I picked up Ty Montgomery, who is projected for one point three four points. Oh, that'll ch- that'll right. change if Bell comes out, and you'll probably have to start him over over Henderson easily. But oh yeah, yeah. If Bell's that's, out, uh, then I, it's 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 gonna bump up to like three points. So I'm I'm good with that. By the way, I just want to end here real quick with how in the hell are the Oakland Raiders beating the Chargers? Like this should not be happening. It's twenty. Probably because I switched from Oakland to LA uh, on my pick'em thing, and uh, yeah, I'm I'm I am horrendous at fantasy football this year, except for my league where I have you know phenomenal keepers of Michael Thomas, Adrian, uh, Adrian, Alvin Kamara, and uh, CMC. But even in that league, I think I'm like third. So I'm looking for a new host. If anybody wants to inquire, please email me at... Taking <laughs> applications here at the Fantasy Six Pack Hour. All right, let's we end this here before AJ throws himself... Did. Let's, let's end this here before AJ digs his own grave even more. So, all right. Hey, it's one of those shows. I know. It's week 10. We're all on by, right? Just like the rest of the NFL. Yep. <laughs> Good week, everybody. Good luck. Hit us up on Twitter. Visit the site. Enjoy.